Hello and welcome to ResearchPod. Thank you for listening and joining us today. In this episode, we look at the work of Professor Oliver Bave and his collaborators at the University of Calgary in Canada. The team developed a test that allows for a more accurate risk assessment for papillary thyroid cancer. Papillary thyroid cancer, or PTC, is the most common type of thyroid cancer, accounting for about 80% of all thyroid cancer cases. PTC cases have risen markedly over time. In the United States and many other countries, the incidence of papillary thyroid cancer has increased by more than 6% per year. As a result, the incidence has tripled between 1975 and 2012. PTC usually spreads to nearby lymph nodes, but rarely to other parts of the body. At diagnosis, about 10% of patients have metastases, meaning that the cancer has spread from the original to secondary sites. Most PTC cases are curable with thyroidectomy, a surgery to remove all or part of the thyroid gland. Some patients may require removal of affected lymph nodes. PTC is rarely life-threatening. However, in 10 to 20% of instances, the cancer will recur locally in the neck or at distant sites. Total thyroidectomy and radioactive iodine are offered to patients with PTCs that are at high risk of recurrence. Effective management of PTC relies on identifying which patients have an aggressive form of the disease. The American Thyroid Association Risk Stratification System is the most widely used tool for guiding clinical decisions. This system estimates the risk of disease recurrence based on clinical and pathological features, but it is inaccurate. This may be partly due to the inclusion of only one molecular marker, the BRAF V600E gene mutation. The role of the BRAF V600E gene mutation in predicting disease outcome is unclear. Moreover, risk estimates using the risk stratification system can only be made after surgery limiting the system's usefulness in planning how extensive surgery should be. A groundbreaking study by the Cancer Genome Atlas Network, published in 2014, was a significant advance in understanding the genetic makeup of PTC. The study mapped the complete genetic profile of PTC in samples from patients in the US and identified two tumour types, BRAF V600E driven tumours and RAS mutated tumours. Professor Oliver Bave and his colleagues at the University of Calgary set out to find out how these genetic types relate to clinical outcomes, especially features related to aggressive disease. Their goal was to create a molecular test that could more accurately predict the risk of recurrence and guide surgical decisions. Using a proprietary machine learning algorithm, HighLife R, the researchers analysed RNA sequencing data from the Cancer Genome Atlas study to identify genes related to recurrence risk. RNA sequencing gives a snapshot of the level of expression of genes in a sample. From over 20,000 genes in 502 PTC patients, of which 335 were used for discovery, they identified 82 genes linked to disease recurrence. An unsupervised analysis of these 82 genes identified three unique subtypes of PTC which the team named Type 1, Type 2 and Type 3. Unsupervised analysis uses machine learning algorithms to analyse unlabeled data to discover patterns independently without human involvement. The molecular subtypes showed noticeably different clinical and pathological characteristics, and these findings were confirmed using additional patient groups from South Korea and Canada. PTC has several histological cell variants. Type 1 PTCs consisted of mainly follicular variants and few tall cell variants, while type 3 had the most tall cell variants. Tall cell variants are known to be more aggressive on average. Type 2 and type 3 histology was similar in that they mostly consisted of classical variants. Type 1 PTCs had fewer BRAF V600E mutations and the highest rate of RAS mutations. In contrast, BRAF V600E mutation rates were highest in type 2 and type 3. Telomerase reverse transcriptase, or TERT, promoter mutations, which are linked to a higher risk of recurrence, were found in all three subtypes, but were most common in type 3 PTCs. 
Although type 1 and type 3 PTCs with TERT promoter mutations had high recurrence rates, type 2 PTCs with TERT promoter mutations showed no recurrences. Type 2 and type 3 PTCs, which were difficult to distinguish based on clinical and pathological features, had high rates of metastases to the lymph nodes and to distant sites. However, type 3 PTCs had the highest risk of recurrence. Type 1 PTCs had smaller tumours and fewer lymph node metastases, which indicate less aggressive behaviour. Multivariate analysis revealed that molecular subtype and the presence of metastases were the strongest predictors of recurrence. The researchers also applied their molecular test to anaplastic thyroid cancers, or ATCs, which are rare, aggressive cancers with a high frequency of TERT promoter mutations and a poor prognosis. All 10 cases had type 3 molecular features. What distinguished type 1 PTCs was that they had significantly disordered lipid metabolism. Type 3 PTCs, and to a lesser extent type 2 PTCs, showed increased activity in the so-called EZH2 hot air pathway. This increased activity was linked to a microenvironment that suppressed the immune response. High EZH2 levels also play a role in tumour dedifferentiation, meaning the reversal of specialisation, which is linked to a higher risk of recurrence and resistance to radioactive iodine therapy. These findings highlight that molecular interactions may alter the effects of mutation. Therefore, understanding these processes provides a fuller picture of tumour behaviour than looking at mutations alone. Bathe and his colleagues found that their molecular subtype-based test combined with tumour size and lymph node status, predicted recurrence more accurately than the risk stratification system used by the American Thyroid Association. Their research has led to the development of a test that determines recurrence risk for PTC, thyroid guide PX, guiding decisions about surgery. The test is designed to identify patients who can be treated with less extensive surgery, avoiding unnecessary complications and preserving quality of life. In low-risk cases, a range of treatments are available, including active surveillance and partial thyroidectomy. Studies are also emerging that are evaluating the role of radiofrequency ablation, a non-surgical treatment. On the other hand, Thyroid Guide PX ensures that high-risk patients are identified so they can receive more aggressive therapy. Used after surgery, the test can help clinicians decide whether additional surgery or radioactive iodine therapy is needed. ResearchPod was also privileged to ask the researchers some questions, starting with what inspired them to conduct the research. Professor Bave affirms that, as a surgical oncologist, I've frequently encountered situations where several treatment options are available, and the best option is not always obvious. There are also cases where toxic treatments are available, but the benefit to the individual patient is not known. For these reasons, we need better diagnostic tools to inform more personalised treatment decisions. My colleagues, who are experts in thyroid cancer, Steve Craig and Adrian Harvey, brought to our attention the need for a test that will refine decision-making for PTC. That's when we decided to apply our novel machine learning algorithm, High Life R, to address that unmet clinical need. Looking ahead, he says, While we've tested the Thyroid Guide PX algorithm on Korean patients, more data from other racial and ethnic groups will advance our understanding of how frequently each molecular subtype occurs. We'll also need to understand how specific treatments affect outcomes in each molecular subtype. Finally, on the possibility of targeted therapies, Professor Bathe explains, There are some features of the high-risk type 3 subtype of PTC that are interesting from a therapeutic perspective. For example, drugs that block EZH2 may be effective in redifferentiating some PTCs enhancing resistant cancer's susceptibility to radioactive iodine therapy. There's also evidence in these tumours that the immune system is suppressed. This represents a rationale for investigating the role of immunotherapy in the future. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening, and stay subscribed to ResearchPod for more of the latest science. See you again soon.